Hello, good morning everyone. This is uh, Dr. Sunil Chandan Shive. I am working as an assistant professor in the Soumya College of Arts and Commerce. In this video, we are going to understand the Chamberlain's oligopoly model. Chamberlain is a very famous economist. His major contribution, particularly in a microeconomics, so in his famous work like the theory of monopolistic competition, which he published in the year 1933. So in his book, he explained how the price and output can be determined in an oligopoly market. So duopoly is a special case of oligopoly market in which there are two sellers or firm produces homogeneous product and sell in the market. For example, the Pepsi and Coca-Cola are producing a soft drink and sell in the market. So it means they have a monopoly for selling the soft drink in the market. The another example of duopoly market is the AMD and Intel company are producing processor for the computer. So they have a monopoly for supplying the microprocessor for the computer. So first of all, the Chamberlain explained how the price and output can be determined in a duopoly market. Then later on, this model, these things he has extended for the oligopoly market. After that, he explained how the price and output can be determined in an oligopoly market. The Chamberlain model of oligopoly is a superior or advanced version of duopoly or the classical model of duopoly. Like classical model of duopoly which is presented by Cournot, Bertrand and Edgeworth. According to classical model of duopoly, the each seller act independently in the, in the market and accordingly they are producing the goods and services in the market. It means the classical model of Duopoly was based on each oligopolist act independently in the market and accordingly they are taking decisions to charge the price or to produce the quantity of output. For example, in a Cournot model, he assumed that the producer first set up or produces the goods and services goods in the market and accordingly he charged the price in the market. Suppose that A and B sellers are there and producing the 500, 500 quantity of output each. So if A wanted to produce the less quantity of output, like he wanted to produce the 300 quantity of output, so he will consider the B will continue to produce the 500 quantity of output. And by considering this, the independently A will decide how much quantity he wanted to produce. So he will produce a 300 quantity and accordingly he will charge the price of the products. The another, the classical model of duopoly which is presented by the Bertrand and Edgeworth, according to them, the first of all producer or seller set the price of the products and accordingly he will supply the quantity in the market. It means he will first set the price and for that price, whatever the demand is there, according to that demand, the supplier or business firm will sell if a business firm will produce and sell the quantity in the market so in this way for example in a Bertrand or Edgeworth model suppose there are A and B sellers are producing the goods and services and for that goods the A and B seller charging the 70 70 price of the products for the per quantity of output and suppose here a producer wanted to set the another price of the products like a producer wanted to set the 60 price of per unit of output while setting the price of 60 a producer will assume that the b will continue to charge the 70 price of per unit of output by considering this the a business firm will charge the 60 rupees per unit of output it means a producer are taking the independently decisions to decide to decide the price of the products. It means according to classical model of duopoly, which is based on <coughs> based on the based on the each oligopolist or each business firm will act independently. They are independently taking decisions to how much quantity they want to produce or how much price they wanted to charge so accordingly they will independently set the price and the level of output but the Cournot have 
criticize on these assumptions because according to crude note each oligopolist act independently it means they are totally ignoring their interdependence because interdependence is an important feature you know oligopoly market or in a duopoly market according to chamberlain interdependence it means the action of one firm is affect on the another business firm for example if there are two sellers are there and if one seller reduces the price of the product so definitely it will affect on the the profit earned by the another business firm so because there are few sellers are there so this few seller each seller will take keen interest to understand what will be the strategy or what will be the action or reaction of their rivals or their competitors so according to chamberlain for example uh, we we take here for example tata company produces the products like a uh, indica thus they have decided to reduce the prices of indica so therefore the more the customers will attract to purchase the indica and on the other hand there are another company like hyundai company producing the maruti so definitely when the tata company reduces the price of indica so that definitely that will affect the profit earned by hyundai by selling the maruti so in this way there is interdependence is there so every business firm taking keen interest to understand what will be the action or what will be the changes taken by their rivals in terms of price producing output advertising strategy or whatever so they are taking keen interest because there are few firms are there so according to chamberlain each business firm by considering the interdependence they behave quite intelligently they recognize their interdependence they learn from their past experience or mistakes and by considering this they take decisions to produce the quantity of output and charge the price of the goods and services so as i said earlier by considering the interdependence the each business firm behave and accordingly they adjust their level of output and that leads to produce a monopoly output and they charge monopoly price of the products it means because of the interdependence each business firm behave intelligently they adjust their level of output and the both the business firm are producing ultimately homo producing monopoly output and charging the monopoly price which is good for them it means the jointly they are getting maximum profit because if the both the business of business firm are getting charging maximum price it means they are getting maximum joint profit and so in this way the stable equilibrium can be achieved even though these both the business firm are not in a collusive manner it means there is no cartel there is no any group there is no communication between these two firms but still they are charging monopoly prices and getting maximum joint profit so in this way the stable equilibrium can be achieved according to chamberlain so this theme this thought the chamberlain have explained with the help of certain diagram and certain assumptions so first of all we will discuss what are the assumptions are taken by the chamberlain and after that after that we will discuss the diagrammatical presentation so first assumptions taken by the chamberlain is there are two seller or producers or we can say business firm these two sellers or business firm producing a homogeneous product homogeneous product like product is the same in terms of test color size third assumptions taken by the chamberlain like as assumptions taken by the kur note in his model there is a identical cost there is equal cost of production chamberlain consider there is a zero cost of production the fourth assumption is there is a linear demand curve the linear demand curve which slow from left side left side to right side downwards which states that there is a inverse relationship between price and demand for the products 
and the last assumptions taken by the Chamberlain, the each oligopolist or each business firm, you know, duopoly market, they understand their 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 interdependence. They recognize their interdependence and accordingly they behave in the market. They adjust their level of their level of output. So we are so first of all, uh, <clears throat> we make a diagram and uh, we'll understand how the Chamberlain trying to explain how the duopoly seller are producing the monopoly output and charging the monopoly price of the products. So this is over axis which present the quantity of output and over axis indicates the price of the products. Suppose a business firm enter in the market, he produces the homogeneous goods and services it means maximum quantity he can produce in the market that is OQN and there is a demand curve the whole market demand curve for business firm A is DD1 so maximum output he can produce OQ1 and DD1 is a demand curve for them for him so corresponding to this the marginal revenue curve for business firm A which slope downwards which is less than DD1. So now the maximum quantity a producer can produce OQN but he decide to produce OQ quantity. Why OQ quantity? Because there is a condition of profit maximizes profit maximizing output is when there is a there is equilibrium when there is a marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost of production. At that at that equilibrium point, the firm gets maximum profit. He produces optimum quantity of output. So a business firm, the, the MR marginal revenue curve of a business firm touches to the OX axis at point Q. It means when the firm produces OQ quantity, their cost of production is a zero. And from that line, when we draw the straight line, that line touches to the DD1 curve at point R it means the firm said the con the firm produces the quantity OQ and for OQ quantity they charge the price OP2 it means <coughs> the firm A earned the total profit OQRP2 how the OQ RP to the firm earn the profit because the profit can be calculated with the help of total revenue minus total cost. So total revenue be calculated with the help of formula like price into quantity. So price is OP2 and output sale by the business firm A is OQ. So the price into output, the total revenue of the business firm A will be OQ RP2 and this is a co total cost. The total cost is a zero because in a assumptions we have taken there is a identical cost yeah if there is zero cost of production so the when the firm sell the quantity of output OQ at OP2 prices so there will be whole profit for the business firm so the total profit for business firm A is OQ R P2 now B business firm enter in the market they start producing these homogeneous goods and services and there's a demand curve for business firm a b is r d1 it means business firm b can produce the quantity of output maximum q qn and there's a marginal revenue curve for business firm b is m r b now b business firm consider here a business firm will continue to produce the oq quantity of output and will charge op price op2 price of the goods and services now there is a prof the maximum profit maximizing output the b firm can produce qb which is half of q QN. So at point B, the firm produces the maximum quantity and gets maximum profit. 
and at point b there is a equilibrium because at point b there is a marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost of production so when we draw the straight line from b that line touches to the r d1 demand curve at point k and firm sell the quantity of output qb and charge the price op1 it means b business firm sell the quantity q b and for q b quantity they charge the price op1 it means the maximum profit earned by business firm b is q b k l q b k l because total revenue is q b k l and total cost is zero so the total profit for the business firm b will be q b k l now there are only two sellers are there now a business firm recognize their interdependence they know that the b business firm have charged the less price so the the customers of a business firm reduces the demand for the goods and services of business firm a will be reduces because the b charging less price now b firm recognize their interdependence they learn from their experience they learn from their past mistakes and they decide to produce o h quantity of output it means earlier a business firm were producing o q quantity but now they decide to produce half of o q while by he will by by taking into consideration the b will continue to produce q b quantity of output and they will continue to charge the op1 price of the products by considering this the a business firm charge the price o p2 and sell the quantity o h it means the a business firm gets the profit o h s p2 matlab o h quantity business firm a sell in the market and for that product the a business firm charge the price o p2 so maximum profit it means the profit of business firm a reduces from o q r p2 to o h s p2 because the a business firm reduces their quantity of output and charge the same price of the goods and services so the business firm a will get the maximum profit now o h s p2 now b business firm recognize their interdependence they realize that their action <coughs> and reaction affect on the another business firm so b business firm decide to produce the same quantity of output it means they decide to produce same quantity q b quantity of output which is equal to h q q b is equal to h q it means b business firm decide to produce same quantity of output and they increases their price of the products from op1 to op2 earlier b business firm were charging op1 price but now they decide to charge op2 price that is monopoly price now b business firm sell the quantity h q and charge the price op2 it means maximum profit earned by b business firm is h q r s so in this way the joint profit produced by business firm a and b is o q r p2 sorry maximum output produced by business firm a and b is o q and among that o h quantity produced by business firm a and h q quantity produced by business firm b and both the business firm are charging the monopoly price that is op2 so the joint profit earned by both the business firm is oq r p2 and among that the a business firm gets the profit oh s p2 and b business firm gets the profit h q r s so in this way chamberlin explain 
the both the business firm gets the maximum profit and they sell the monopoly output in the market so there are certain criticisms on this model which is presented by the chamberlain number 1 is a it is closed model because in a chamberlain model they have ignored entry of new business firm according to critics if the both the business firm or the two sellers are getting maximum profit so it means it will attract the other firms to enter in the market to produce the goods and services and sell in the market so it means according to critics if new entry allowed to produce the homogeneous product so at that time the stable equilibrium cannot be occurred it means that the seller cannot produce the monopoly output and charge monopoly price of the products so it means in this model the chamberlain have ignored the entry of other business firm that model is restricted to the only two sellers it is not extended for the few sellers so if few sellers are there the stable equilibrium is unlikely to occur the second criticism is the this duopoly model involve joint profit sharing by two business firm with zero cost yes maximum both the business firm are getting joint profit with zero cost but the problem can be arises when they are going to share the profit because when the problem will arise when they are going to share the profit it means there is no cartel there is no communication there is no any group between these two firms there is no collusion but how they are going to sh equally share the level of profit so in this way there are certain criticisms made by the this economist on this uh, chamberlain's oligopoly model the last part is a conclusion so in this way we can understand in a oligopoly market or in a duopoly market the each business firm gets maximum joint profit they reach at a stable equilibrium even though they act in a non collusive manner there is no cartel there is no any group but still the both the business firm are getting maximum profit and stable equilibrium can be achieved the second we can say in a chamberlain model he has explained the duopolis behaving intelligently they learn from their experience they realize their interdependence and because of the interdependence though both the business firm reach at stable equilibrium and each business firm produces monopoly output and charge monopoly price of the goods and services thank you so much so if you like this video please comment share and subscribe to this channel thank you